the esophagus opens into stomach that's what we discussed now stomach is a, a hollow muscular organ present in the upper left part of the abdomen beneath the diaphragm now we have a diaphragm you see the in between thorax and abdomen there is a muscular partition that is called diaphragm now the esophagus the esophagus pierces the diaphragm and enters into abdomen now in this abdomen the upper left quadrant the upper left quadrant you can see j shaped stomach it is a muscular hollow organ now the food that is hurriedly swallowed is entering into stomach the food stays inside stomach for 3 to 4 hours it stays inside the stomach for 3 to 4 hours for the first time in in animal world in annelids you find something called stomach if you see nematodes there is nothing called stomach presence of stomach is always an advantage character because if there is no stomach animal has to forage for food continuously but when there is stomach animal can swallow good amount of food which can give considerable energy and can forget about food for considerable period of time it is definitely advantage to animal is something which we see for the first time in annelids now inside the stomach chemical and mechanical digestion occurs now if you see the structure of the stomach the the left side i mean left to the subject huh? the left side you can see a greater curvature and on the right side on the right side you can see a lesser curvature so it's more curved on the left side it is less curved on the right side hmm? <coughs> and if you see the internal structure now here which part is exactly the stomach so th th this is an opening there at the top you can see an opening there so that opening is called cardia you you call it as cardia and it is guarded by sphincter it's called cardiac sphincter same thing so th that is the a, a, anything beneath that sphincter and here you can find another sphincter here this opening is called pylorus you see from this direction that opening is called pylorus you will have pyloric sphincter so this sphincter is called pyloric sphincter that sphincter is called cardiac sphincter and in between these two that total area is actually stomach the cardiac sphincter i told you is also called gastroesophageal sphincter it is also called lower esophageal sphincter and food after it has entered into stomach that food is prevented from going back into esophagus by cardiac sphincter so it's preventing regurgitation now food is here for considerable period of time maybe 3 to 4 hours it is there now here part partially it is digested is not completely it's partially digested and it becomes acidic the the food is acidic now this total food it is not pushed at the same speed see food is coming through esophagus food is coming into stomach at a rapid pace but all the food is not leaving into into intestine at the same speed so lower esophageal sphincter it will regulate small small quantities of food will enter into intestine remember intestine is very narrow it can accommodate only small quantities of food so whenever that sphincter the pyloric sphincter opens small quantities of food will enter into small intestine so there is difference between the function of both the sphincters the region of stomach the region of stomach very next to cardiac sphincter is called cardiac stomach 
till the line I drew there, that is the cardiac stomach. And see this doom like structure above that opening. See, this is the opening of esophagus. So, above that opening, you can see a doom like structure. This doom like structure is called fundic stomach. So that area is the funding stomach. Till here, this area is the body of the stomach, body or corpus. From this line up to this line. So this area, 80% of the stomach is made up of corpus only, corpus or body. A small area present above that opening is called funding, the doom shaped area. And at the beginning, a small cardiac stomach. The remaining part is called pyloric stomach. So the, this is the, this area is the pyloric stomach. That's the pyloric stomach. It's called pyloric stomach. This opening is called pylorus. That's why this is py pyloric stomach. And this sphincter is called pyloric sphincter. And this opening is called cardia, and it is guarded by cardiac sphincter. And that's present close to the heart. That's why it's called cardiac. Now if I take the pyloric stomach again. Pyloric stomach is again divided into two parts. One is the pyloric antrum. This is the pyloric antrum. And that area is the pyloric canal. This is the pyloric antrum and this is the pyloric canal. Now in between the body and pyloric antrum, you can see a small depression. In between the body and pyloric stomach, you can see a depression. The depression is called incisura angularis. Incisula angularis is an angular depression. It's an angular depression which marks a differentiation between pyloric stomach and the corpus of the stomach. So we are seeing the structure of stomach. So this is the greater curvature on the left side. This is the lesser curvature on the right side. You can see that opening is cardia, guarded by cardiac sphincter. This opening is the pylorus, guarded by pyloric sphincter. In between these two areas, that area is the stomach and the initial part that total area is cardiac stomach and that elevated region is called fundic stomach this is the body of the stomach and that is the pyloric stomach the pyloric stomach divided into pyloric antrum and pyloric canal pyloric antrum and body is separated by a angular notch called incisura angularis now if you observe inside the stomach, if I take cross section of the stomach and observe, inside you can see folds. You can see folds like this. The folds are called gastric rugae. The folds are called gastric rugae. We saw esophageal rugae inside these facts. So inside the stomach also there are rugae, they are called gastric rugae. Now whenever food is taken, when the stomach is empty, you can see rugae. But when food is taken, when the stomach is expanding, gradually you can see the rugae gradually disappearing. So that means they are not the permanent folds. Now internally inside the stomach, internally inside the stomach, there is a 2 millimeter thickness mucus layer. Inside the stomach, inside the wall of the stomach, there is mucus layer, which is 2 millimeters in thickness. Now, when I remove the mucus and observe, I can find, if I remove the mucus and observe, inside I, I, I find pits. I find pits like this. The pits are called gastric pits. It is called gastric pits. 
they are called gastric bits, they are also called as foveolae gastrici. They are called foveolae gastrici or gastric bits. Now, in one square millimeter, they are up to 90 to 100 gastric bits. In one square millimeter, there are 90 to 100 gastric bits are present. Each gastric bit contains gastric glands. Three to seven gastric glands are present inside a gastric bit. And the gastric glands, they produce gastric juice. The gastric juice is useful for, is responsible for partial digestion. Remember that inside the stomach, the food is staying there for three to four hours. And here, mechanical as well as chemical digestion occurs. When I say mechanical digestion, the muscles are contracting. When the muscles are contracting, the food is mixed with the digestive juices, so mechanical digestion. And the gastric glands, when they pour in their secretions, now enzymes present in that are responsible for digestion of the food partially inside the stomach.